Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour. Welcome back to the World Series 2021 quarterfinals, best of 13. Shea against Vivid. Quite excited for this one, to be honest, because I think this is one of the closest uh, quarterfinals that we may see. And uh, yeah, it's kind of battle of the new school versus the newer school, because Shea is quite kind of new school, only been around the last couple of years been in the uh kind of among the top players and then vivid very very new indeed like probably the last one or two years only has uh, fast tracked himself right to the top with the help of being in the oe clan getting tips and tricks and stuff like that but i think it's, it's just an all-round really decent strong player anyway so yeah we've got vivid down in the south for the gla demolition he's playing in the green color up in the north we have shay with the blue a china infantry and the map is natural threats. So natural threats, you've got these oils, uh, definitely points of contention to go for. And uh, yeah, one thing to note about these games is uh, they were only played today, like literally at the time of me uploading this video, they're only about an hour old, something like that. Um, Vivid does live in Malaysia, and Shay, I actually don't know where he lives. He's a bit of a mysterious guy, to be honest. He, uh, <laughs> I played with him in an AOD tournament once before, not a defense tournament. Where you play against the defensive waves and we wanted to use microphones and Shay like joined the voice chat but never actually spoke so I don't know if he has a mic or if he just didn't want to speak but he also doesn't tell which people which country he's from as well so maybe if you know his country of origin maybe you can let us know in the uh, in the comments I'd certainly be interested to hear that he's missed the truck here but yeah the reason I go back to where they're uh, where they're located is because I believe there was lag in these games because I've seen on Gen Tool, there's loads and loads of replays. They've been doing loads and loads of lag tests. So, uh, yeah, I believe there is lag. So the micro, will it be 100%? Who knows? Let's see. Yeah, missing a truck there is definitely bad. Is that a little bit nerves? Don't know. Looks like quite a solid uh, build. Oh, vivid. So he's done the right thing. He's brought an RPG. Just something like Xcal and Google will do. He'll bring an RPG to like clear the mines or check those mines there, but then he stepped on the mines anyway. Is that down to the lag? Who knows? Who knows? Just the way Zero Hour is coded or is made up of. Lag is uh, a thing that affects Zero Hour very, very, uh, very, very often. But yeah, the distance between the players, no doubt, not um, not helping here. So this is. Uh, oh, he's made another truck now. <laughs> <laughs> that's very very late very very late indeed tech rpg is going for one of the dozers he didn't get the other one though although he did have an rpg there earlier but yeah he was focused on the mines there but this tech rpg is still here outpost making its way across the map and yeah vivid could just outright die here he needs probably a terrorist from here but that's going to be uh gonna be a missed opportunity shay's probably gonna be able to clear this right side supply but who knows though because with this toxin tractor with these few quads and rpgs you can pop these open and clear up with that with those inside but mini going to be in use really well there for shay his base is really really secure he's also clearing this technical as well this outpost does get popped open and a few units here are being picked off but that quad does go down and this is a really bad engagement and bad start all round, I think, for sh for um, for Vivid. Because he's, he's lost a few quads there. His quad numbers aren't that great. He's going to lose this supply. Yes, Vivid's expanding here. But what has Vivid really got? And what damage has he really done to Shea? And the answer is not a lot. He's rebuilding this supply here. This outpost can still roam around. It's going to keep Vivid busy at least because he's got to keep an eye on that otherwise he's going to lose another supplier he's going to lose that tunnel when he's not paying attention meanwhile Shay can just do exactly what he wants in his base he's got he's got mines and bunkers in all the right places so there's not a lot vivid can do he does have control of this though but no capture upgrade just yet got the rebel there no rebel over here just yet although i think the barracks went down here comes one rebel it was going the wrong way for it for a second it looked like this outpost is going to what? Try to kill this supply one more time? Even if you sacrifice it and kill that supply one more time, I still think that's worth it. Would be nice to probably pick off a few quads, especially if they come in here single fire. Uh, sorry, single file. I definitely think it's worth switching targets. Because keeping these quad numbers down is super, super important. But he's done both here. He's, he's killing the units. 
and he's killed the supply. This is so bad for Vivid. Because even though he he is going to clear this up, just look at how much losses he's taken just from a couple of outposts. But meanwhile, Shay's now pushing down the middle. A massive wave of outposts here. I think this is harder for the demo, you know? I think demo has to work a lot harder here to get the win. And yeah, so far we're not seeing Shea really take any damage. In fact, if you look at the XP difference, it's absolutely insane. So I wonder who's going to be the player to be complaining about the lag. Because typically, if, bo if both players are happy just playing the lag, they, they won't be doing any, any lag tests. But like uh, in after a few games, like, I don't know if it's after these first two games or whatever. Yeah, they start doing lag tests. And it, who's going to be the one complaining about that? And is that going to like tilt one of them, like their mental game? GG. Well played. Vivid quits. Maybe, is that a little bit too soon? I don't know. It's probably 95% over just because Shade, this didn't take any damage whatsoever and then he just went across the map and just uh, obliterated Vivid and killed loads of his quads. It was just like, it was a massacre really, wasn't it? It actually looks a little bit closer than it was really, 36 to 20. I suppose that's just because all the tank hunters, they go down really quick to the, to the quads. But it was like, if you look at the buildings lost six, that's where the devastation is, six to zero. So yeah, GG, well played to Shea, 1-0, quite a convincing start there. So jumping into the reverse then, this is where it's going to be a test for Shea because he's now playing with the GLA Demolition down in the south with the blue. And then up in the north, we've got the green for OE Vivid with the China Infantry. So yeah, I do think infantry is stronger here. Um, a big part of it, as a few of the pro players have mentioned in the past, is... That first technical and what damage you can get done with it means a hell of a lot. So that first technical from Vivid, we saw it evac an RPG, shot the mines, and then he just ran into the mines and the whole thing was wasted. So that technical was $600. Each terrorist is $200. So that's six, 600 in total because he, he probably would have had three. And he lost the RPG as well. So yeah, straight away it's $1,200 worth of units and then plus the RPG, which you get free from the tunnel, but you could say that's $300 as well. So that's like $1,500 just walked straight into mines and didn't achieve anything. And that's like your first attack. That's when like, in the beginning you start with 10k and you spend most of it. You can only get like squeeze like one unit out or one unit and a few terrorists, something like that. And that, that that's like your biggest impact. Like that. I really think that's like as the game goes on, like single units have less and less impact especially when there's like 20 tanks out for example so yeah that first unit does make all the difference but because it ran into the mines did not achieve all that much so this is the question now for me what can shay get done with his technical because if this has a much better start then i'm gonna give shay much better chance like he's got a unit ran into mines there. i think there was a terrorist but if this for example hits the hits the trucks here we now know there's no mines. See the same tech RPG thing going on. And now he's going to release the terrorist. Hopefully there's no mines there for him. Yeah, it does kill it. Very, very nice indeed. And he is going to get the dozer as well. Now that is really important there because now what that means is this dozer is going to have to risk going all the way over here. And Shay's going to know where that's going to be because he has to rebuild that supply. So now you know the location of the last dozer. It's going to be making its way over there. Some people will choose to keep it hidden and play super safe. But most of the time they're probably going to want to build that supply ASAP. So Shay could go for the dozer hunt now. If he's got one more unit out, load that up with a tech RPG, go over there and hunt that dozer. You know where it's going to be because it has to be rebuilding it. And tech RPG is coming. Is he going to head over there? Is he going to go over there? The supply is not being rebuilt just yet. It is now. But there are two outposts here from Vivid. Is he going to be able to stop? Oh, baby. Oh, should he have committed to that? Should he have gone? He doesn't even pop open an outpost. Okay, so the tech RPG does get stopped. Big push here on the right-hand side. And that bunker is in place, but it is empty, though. It is empty. And this is looking really, really positive here for Shea. Shea, Shea is just a beast of a player. When he brings his A game, he he is really good. And I know I've took the, uh, took the mech out of him in the past because he I made that video Raging Shea because that's his nickname. But, like, without raging and without being mad when you lose and stuff like that, you, you, I honestly believe you'll never be uh, you'll never be a top player. 
if you're happy with losing or you don't you don't feel bad about losing then you'll never be top and this is why you're seeing Shay on form now so uh vivid still alive he's got three trucks over here now because obviously the tnt came in bunker's gone down flame wall in play Shay has not expanded anywhere yet i don't think and here's another tech rpg actually he is going for that dozer he is going for it Quite a lot of RPGs in there, actually. And he's going for the kills on the trucks. And that's not looking well controlled there from Vivid. I think Vivid should have pulled them out. Yeah, he's taking quite a lot of damage. Bunker placed down there to scrap the Nye. And now that supply is going to be... It's going to be focused down. But the quads are coming in here. And this dose is going to get sandwiched now. Shea really smelling blood. Really going for the kill here. And that dozer is really living on the edge. RPGs here. Even if they don't kill that, they might pick off an outpost. This dozer. Mm, it's about as well protected as it can be for now, but that's what I mean. If you, if you kill that supply and, what, and you leave him on one dozer, then yeah, that you're seeing Shea knows exactly that and he's going for it. Nice, nice amount of quads here. You see he's keeping the quad count up. A few more workers there, maybe. He's got a decent amount here. No expansion or anything. He's going for the oils now. Yeah, we've seen before in games where people will keep up the aggression in the beginning and then they'll take the pressure off and expand to a third supply, go for all the oils and start bunkering in. But you're seeing here Shea expanding to that one oil pretty late. He's not got a third supply or anything. He's just been pumping out the quads, keeping up the aggression. And I, I kind of like that commitment, especially when you've been having success so far. But here is a big loss here for Shea. Even though he just picked off a flamer, he's just lost every single quad. And despite all of that decent aggression there from Shea, look at the XP difference now just from all them quad kills. Shea's now dropping down a third. He's going to need a second arms dealer, I think, to get more quads out. Unless he, yeah, He's going for a palace. Okay, he's going for a palace. He's got another oil. I think a few more tunnels here would not be a bad idea. And also garrison in that because you're under a bit of pressure now. Because Vivid... He's got a few units out, but... The outpost count isn't that high, actually, is it, I suppose? Interesting, that truck there is actually inside the supply. <laughs> so the technical is actually able to shoot it. Otherwise, if it wasn't inside the supply, it actually gets blocked by it. This technical is on a pure rampage, and this dozer is screwed. Yeah, baby, that dozer is screwed. You need that prop. You need it, especially when the GLA has taken over everything. He's going to have a Jarman soon as well. Vivid is in a bad way. It just makes me think, because the, the next game is going to be... They did they did a couple of lag tests, so just making me think now, who is the player complaining about the lag? Because usually... Usually because of Vivid's location, usually the lag is as a result of his location. I mean, if you're playing two people from Malaysia, no, no doubt it would be fine. But because not a lot of people are from Malaysia, then, yeah, usually it's as a result of <laughs> a vivid joining the game. Not picking on him, just saying that's that's usually the case. I mean, sometimes me and Vivid can play with 10 ping, but we have to play, like, only on Revora, for example. Okay, so Vivid, a bit of a push across the map, but I really don't think it's going to do much because uh, Shea has got the quad numbers back because of everything that he's everything that he's done. He's expanded to a he's expanded to a third. He's got two oils. He's got a palace. He's getting a second arms dealer. He's getting a fake market. Everything here is going for for Shea. I think he's got a Jarman out now as well, and this is looking like a two zero to me. This really is. <clears throat> Because even though we looked at the XP before and Vivid was way ahead in the XP because of all them quad kills, now he's dozer hunted. He can't build a CC, so he's not going to get all them support powers.
Here come the Demo Bikes and a big quad pop. That would be, would be risky if it wasn't for the Demo Bikes, but actually the quads have dealt with everything anyway. And Vivid has been defeated. Who would have imagined that? A 2-0 lead there for Shea. Absolutely epic. And it just, I don't want to sound like a broken record, keep saying the same stuff, but... <clears throat> But I am. <laughs> it all comes down to the, the aggression in the beginning. So he does a bit of aggression. He does a decent first TNT. And then some people will just like, okay, take the pressure off. Now I'll drop down a third. Now I'll get two oils. Now I'll build a palace. And I'll just sit back with like 20 stingers and all that lot. But Shea, for like the good first five or six minutes, kept the pressure up. He stayed on one arms dealer. He only got one oil because it costs money to build that rebel and then to build the capture upgrade, which means you're naturally going to have less tunnels or, or naturally going to have a few less quads. Sure, when you get the oil and it starts paying for itself, then you can build loads and loads of quads and do, and do whatever you want. But it's those few seconds where you take it off, 30 seconds or a minute or whatever, whilst you're queuing up that rebel and getting the oil, that you would naturally stop building a few quads, stop building a few tunnels. And it's that time where Vivid might be given a bit of time to breathe and stuff like that. So... Yeah, we, we actually saw it most recently against uh, Boyka versus uh, Excal when Boyka played with the China Infantry and he was doing the two two war factories uh, with the outposts and the, the flamers spamming at Excal. And if he had just kept that up rather than upgrade into a barracks and upgrade into a propaganda center, he would have beaten Excal. So it just, it, you can see it in, in that kind of game, China Infantry versus China. And also you saw it there with Demo against Infantry. And because he kept that pressure up, Vivid was never able to get a decent army out and then Shea, at the exact right time, then expanded to an oil, and then expanded to a third spy much, much later. So yeah, really, really like that. Really impressed by Shea. 2-0 is the score. Okay, so jump into the next game. Yeah, looking at general data, they did play like two or three lag tests. That generally means, probably, unless they've changed platform, that there is some kind of lag going on here. So yeah, we have USA versus Laser now. We've got Shea up in the north of Vendetta, with the USA Vanilla in the blue. Uh, down in the south, we've got USA Laser for Vivid with the green color. Hopefully you're liking the new GUI, by the way. I've got this little blue thing going on. I've got my logo down there in the right that Exile kindly made for me. So, uh, yeah, and you'll also notice when I'm actually playing games now, actually the, the control bar is actually transparent as well, so you can see a little bit more. It's actually what Reznov was using against me whilst I was using the translucent one. I think that's the word, translucent, but you can't see through it or opaque. Whereas, uh, yeah, Reznov was using the transparent one. I do think the transparent one is better. It does take a little bit of getting used to with the new control bar. But, um, yeah, once you're used to it, it's good. And if you want a custom one with your own logo and stuff like that, I'm sure Exile will probably be willing to uh, help you out. I did send him a little little thank you donation to him. Helping me out because it is super, super cool with the blue matching the blue of the logo and stuff like that. So we've got Shea coming in with a drop, and the Chinook is slowly pulled. He's going to take a tiny bit of damage. But we've got Vivid dropping off two missile defenders and building a barracks. Seen Excal do that quite a few times. Ooh, three missile defenders, actually, and the barracks. Both players have gone for two supplies. Shea is collecting multiple Chinooks from here, which I do like. So, yeah, I think he's thought about this in advance. Like if you get dropped there... Oh, what's he doing? What's he doing? Oh, he's going to get laser locked down, I thought. This one here is getting cleared up. Vivid is collecting. Still, he's going to get laser locked a bit, but the missile defender will go down. But he's getting quite a few shots off, and that is going to go low, actually. Mistake there from Vivid, for sure. And I think Shay's ahead just because he's collecting from so many crates here. And some of these are like 5 point something K as well, so it's quite a lot. Uh, Shay's going to have to deal with this barracks, though, because otherwise he'll end up with an overwhelming amount of infantry in his base he's gonna have to deal with that shade does have a lot of rangers though but there is a dozer here though so it could be used to get the crush and as i say that he's moving it to get the crush vivid's also moving out a load of rangers over here but there's a v coming in shade does seem, seem to be definitely playing on point moving them rangers straight back rather than just leaving them on tack me of whatever he is moving them back and now some of these rangers here are going to get found. And they're not like free rangers. They're not like lost a building and just got them for free. He's actually built all of them rangers. They're $225 each. Shay's going to need flashbangs, I'd say. And this dozer could get the crush here on all of these. He needs to be careful, Shay. Is he paying attention as much as I said? Loses a lot of rangers there. He's going to get some free from this killed supply. What the hell is going on here? Vivid is losing more Chinooks. Oh, baby. This one's low. He's lost one. There was a laser lock going on through the supply, but actually it couldn't hit. 
And this uh, attack here has been stopped. But Shay's collecting on so many Chinooks here from so many different crates. I really like the position of that. And it's not the first time we've seen that. I think we saw Marikar quite a few games ago. It was like round two or round three. He did that against such a player. I can't remember exactly who it was. But when there's so many crates there, yeah, collecting on different crates, it can't actually be that much slower than just having two spies for Chinooks, I don't think. V there gets picked off, and Shea is on point. You see what I mean, man? When he when Shea brings his A game to a tournament, when there's money on the line, Shea is money hungry. I've spoke to him before, I've dealt with him before, and I know how money hungry this guy is. When there's money on the line, you can trust me, he's going to bring his A game. Yeah, I'd say right now Vivid is behind because he lost that one Chinook. And I think Vivid's collection rate is more because of these different crates. But Vivid is collecting off different crates here, though, I suppose. Vivid's actually ahead in XP, which is a bit weird. I think it's because he killed... Ooh. I think it's because Vivid killed that. The supply there. V goes down there on both sides. But once again, Vivid has missile defenders underneath where he needs to collect from. So he's not able to do anything there. And Shay has got an enormous amount of Vs out. How the hell has he got so many Vs out like that? Maybe it does come back to the money thing. Shay doesn't even need to kill that barracks because the barracks can't do anything while the rangers are there. Shay even has the toe upgrade now. A load of missile defenders here, here unloaded for Vivid. Tries to get the laser lock, but actually gone behind the fire base. Laser lock from this side. Laser lock from this side now as well. And those Vs do go down. So that is a really nice hold there for Vivid. And big losses for Shay. Even though those Vs gone down on both sides, I think it was three for Shay. And one there for Vivid. Shay got his own fire base up here. He's also long distance collecting back from over here. He's got five Chinooks actually. His economy is uh, is better. I think if we stopped the game now and just checked how much each player has collected, I don't think you can see that here. No, you can't. It'd be nice to have that as a little stat if anyone's watching that and can see how much each player has collected. That would be a nice thing to have. I don't think it's possible, but maybe. But this firebase over here is going to do a bit of damage to this V, but you would imagine the V is able at least to go in and kill the dozer and maybe unload there and get some laser locks. Oh, it goes down the splash damage. It shoots the firebase or something. It shoot the firebase or shot the firebase or the dozer and killed itself. Laser lock here comes in on the V. And, oh, that is bad for Vivid. He's got two Vs. And there's a load more Vs ready to go. This is looking very, very bad indeed for Vivid. Shea is just 100% on form. And this is virtually uh, an identical mirror. But yeah, with them two Vs there, he's just not able to collect his economy. Just goes down and down and down. Just look at the economy difference here. So yeah, look at that. It's like, well, it's like what, 50% extra? Almost 50% extra economy? Because Shade has had more Chinooks. He was collecting from all them different crates. Like, yeah, like three, three Chinooks on one supply. So. so yeah, and Vivid also lost the Chinook. He lost some HP quite early on the Chinook. And uh, Shay's just on, on form. Interestingly, Vivid actually destroyed more units. But Shay, I think, is destroying more key units. And he's mainly harassing the economy. So, very, very well played. Shay 3-0. What a legend so far. Okay, jumping into the reverse. Vivid is in a difficult situation. 3-0 down. So, Shay's almost halfway towards his victory. He needs seven wins to go through to the semifinals, where he will face... Uh, Excal, the winner of this, will face Excal. And Shay, if he goes through, he's had uh, good performances against Excal in tournaments before. So I think Shay's a, a contender for winning this tournament, you know, based on what we're seeing so far. But now we've got Shay with the slightly stronger army, USA Laser, down in the south with the blue. Again, it looks like he's going for the same build order. Up in the north, we've got Vivid with the green USA Vanilla. So why is laser stronger? Well, you've got laser turrets rather than 
uh, standard Patriots. You've got um, cheaper Avengers, two thousand dollars compared to fifteen hundred for laser. It, interesting. It's it's like watching. It's like watching a mini Excal, you know. <laughs> vivid because this is Excal's build order three, three missile defenders two rangers nothing wrong with copying players nothing wrong at all because it is a super strong build order but Shay Shay's Shay reacting pretty decent here I think vivid maybe should have gone for a drop would X would Excal have gone for a drop in that situation I think he does if the enemy's not going for a drop himself then he does go for a drop but it's actually a, a two barracks build order which is pretty uncommon really but if vivid unloads here and these might not be able to collect. And Vivid behind this is going for the oil. So it'd be interesting to see how Shay's going to react to this initial pressure. He's going to react initially by putting his Chinooks over here, which I like. But then this V is going to continue. Try to get under these Chinooks as well. Meanwhile, there's another V actually over this side. But is Shay paying attention to that? He is, but Vivid also paying attention. Moves his V around. If he manages to kill one dozer, V versus V here, and Shay is going to lose that V. I think you can see here, definitely is a bit of a lag and a bit of the delay. Because I think with no lag and no delay, those that V would have been able to run that over. So here for Shay at the moment, he's doing that thing again where he's selecting on all these different crates. But these Vs are still roaming around, but I think they're empty now. So Shay just needs to worry about these here. But meanwhile, Vivid's actually expanded to a second supply. And I think Vivid here, you'd have to say he is in the lead because he's got two oils, two supplies. He's got decent V numbers, bigger V numbers actually, larger V numbers. And yeah, he's controlling the game. He's underneath the supplies. Shay is in a bad way actually this time. Vivid out for some revenge. He's looking at one of the Shnooks. One of the Shnooks does go down, and Vivid is killing the War Factory now. I don't know if Shay's even got any dozers left. There is the uh, Missile Defender here, but Vivid seems to be on the case, and it's actually hitting the Firebase. Got a V straight down the middle of the map. It's going to maybe go for that dozer and get underneath there, but does it really matter, though, because Shay is taking so much damage back here. He will be able to clear it up, actually. What you want to do in this situation as the USA, you want to kind of flip it so... It's the enemy who's under pressure. You want to be taking the fights under his Chinooks where he's collecting. You don't want to be taking the fights under your Chinooks where you're not able to collect. Uh, these two oils are a problem. Those has been picked off. Firebase is going to go down, but there's two Vs on the way here from Vivid. And that V is going to go down very quick. I think Shay should have unloaded a little bit sooner, but I don't think he knew these Vs are so fully loaded. One oil has been killed, but the one does remain. Strategy center being built now for Vivid. He's not collected on two different crates there where I think he could be. And he's still got two Chinooks over here. Pretty undamaged. Not damaged at all, actually. And, yeah, Shay's on no dozer. Never attack it from Vivid and the V there. Defending for Shade does go down. And Shay is looking vulnerable. He's got an attack going on over here, but now Search and Destroy is in play. He's losing Chinooks, losing HP at least. Uh, that oil has been killed. Shay, I just feel like Shay's scrambling to defend too much. And taking too much harassment. Okay, he hasn't lost any Chinooks as of yet, but the amount of times they've had to be pulled. The search and destroy advantage. Vivid's even getting a CC now. Yeah, the two oils being killed. Definitely a consolation price. But it's just all the time Shay is being harassed. Yeah, was Shay too passive here with that double barracks? I don't know. He's still in it for sure, though. He's got three, three Vs. And the middle of the map. But he's sending him in single file though. And that one there is going to get picked off at least. This one will go to his death as well. 
That's the problem going in single file. Because it's always going to be a one versus three engagement if you're going in single file. So yeah, GG. Well played there to Vivid. Maybe he's getting some uh, confidence back. 3-1 in total. And a best of 13. is the first to win seven games, remember. Okay, so jumping into the next game. We've got Shea down in the south for the China Infantry in the blue. Up in the north, we've got Vivid with the green USA laser. Okay, so, infantry laser. Mm. Don't really like this matchup, to be honest. Yeah, personally hate to play it. <laughs> Either way, it always seems when you're the infantry, you've always got a V running around, chasing, you're chasing after it and he's killing your trucks. And then when you're playing as the laser, it always seems like you've got an outpost under your Chinooks that you can't fight because you haven't got enough Vs out, so it... Basically, battle of those two strengths that the, the USA wants to keep the, the infantry busy until he gets his V numbers out. And the infantry wants to get an outpost as soon as possible underneath the Chinooks. That's what, basically what he wants. There's also really strong things like assault troop crawlers. Assault troop crawler rush, stuff like that. It's hard to deal with too. So yeah, we've got an ambulance out for Vivid. Loaded with missile defenders, actually. Cool thing about ambulances is they're more durable against the tank enters. Than V's, for example. The V will go down a lot sooner. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think ambulances are better at turning around and moving, maneuvering around as well. I think. Trucks are being harassed here. We've got two laser locks, and I think both of them trucks are going to go down. That's a poor maneuver there from Vivid. In fact, a complete lack of maneuver. And he's got no aggressive outpost to it whatsoever. He's got an outpost here, but it's a bit late heading that way. And all the tank enters here have been run over. So Vivid looking more on point right now. I think the mistake here from Shea is not boxing in his trucks. And also remaking his trucks whilst... Whilst there's still an ambulance there with a the hellfire is questionable as well. Outpost here. It's a pretty fully loaded outpost. Gets laser locked. He's going to evac. He is going to evac. So yeah, despite the decent aggression there from Vivid, you see what I mean? <laughs> it's exactly what I said. You're dealing with these missile defenders, the ambulance. Okay, it's an ambulance, not a V. But you're still dealing with it and running around. It's not always easy. But then at the same time, the laser's got to deal with this massive outpost that's just been literally queued up and sent across the map. Really simple and easy to do. And then all of a sudden, the laser's going to have so much difficulty in dealing with it. He's going to need so many Vs to deal with that. Like what? To comfortably deal with that? Probably five? Without taking major losses? Maybe you could get away with four, but you're probably going to lose two Vs or three Vs. This ambulance is getting harassed now. It's not gone low yet. <laughs> See? <laughs> this needs like a few more hits and it will go down. Yeah, it goes down now. But yeah, I think once Shea stabilizes now, that's actually looking quite okay for him, despite the decent attack there from Vivid in the beginning. David has got the tow upgrade, and he has cleared this little tower thing.
The problem here for Vivid, whilst he's getting these V numbers up, he's still not collecting over here, and, uh... Yeah, it all kind of goes down to how, how that first outpost attacked in, and unfortunately for Vivid, he got caught whilst the firebase was not even established, so... And then he lost his first V dealing with it as well. I think he needs some Hellfires here, or drones at least. If he sends them in, in that formation, he might lose some. He has got flashbangs. He's trying to micro here. And yeah, so far he hasn't really lost anything. He's got one flashbang here. Problem is there's too many gunners. And meanwhile there's another massive attack <laughs> making its way across the map. There's a prop up already for Shea. He's got two really damaged trucks, but either way he's still collecting. And this massive attack here for Shea is going to be problematic for Vivid. But... He does have flashbangs, though, and this first outpost here is going to get popped open by a firebase. Shay's follow-up is another wave. Don't know if he's making MIGs yet. We'll check in a second. Shay doing really, really well here so far. Shay is now making MIGs, as I just said it. It might be a Helix, actually. It might be a Helix. Could be. So, that, yeah, let's not assume that it's MIGs just yet. This outpost army continues to push in. These Vs are having a hard time dealing with this, but the flashbangs are dealing with what, whatever does unload. But the V numbers are just getting so, so few now. And these Chinooks are once again being harassed. And this time, one Chinook here does fall. And behind this, Shea is getting both of the oils. What a convincing set this is looking like for Shea so far. What an absolutely amazing performance. I just, the only thing not happy in that game with Shea is just not boxing his trucks. Maybe he could have boxed his trucks and he wouldn't have had to lose anything in the beginning. Maybe that ambulance would have had less of an impact. It did slow him down a bit. But as soon as he like kind of dealt with that and got that outpost under Vivid's uh, Chinooks, it just all like went in Shay's favor then. So really, really well played. Yeah, GG. Maybe Vivid's just having an off day or maybe Shay is just too strong. Let's see what happens in the reverse. Okay, so jumping into the reverse, we've got Shea uh, up in the north with the USA laser in the blue on Arctic Lagoon. Interestingly, this map is spelt wrong when you actually uh, find it. It's spelt Ar Arctic, like an Arctic truck, but Arctic, the, the white snow. <laughs> it's supposed to have a C in it, but yeah, interestingly, it made the map all spelt wrong. Uh, so yeah, quality control needs to check themselves, <laughs> check themselves maybe. We've got uh, Vivid with the infantry down in the south with the green. Got a nice little cute drone flying straight above the dozer. And yeah, interestingly placed drone because now he is going to see what is made from there. And it's got more of a chance of not being hit by an outpost. But we know an outpost now is probably going to come from there. Queue up there and it probably still will hit it. So maybe it could have been a little bit further back. But yeah, Shay's got good vision on the base at the moment. He knows it's Wolf Hatchie Barracks. There's no helix or anything random like that. So we've got Vivid with a supply here. Is that a perfect supply or not? Questionable. We've got Shea actually going for a drop. Now, is Vivid going to react to that in time? Has he even seen it? Oh, it's a laser turret. Don't think that's going to work, though, is it? Oh, it's a missile defenders as well. Uh, laser lock on one truck. Okay, one truck has gone down. Lays lock on the outpost, but it doesn't go down. So you've killed one truck for losing a dozer and two missile defenders. I don't think that was impactful enough. But one missile defender did get dropped over over here, and the trucks are being harassed. The one almost goes down, so I think that's okay. But it all comes down to, again, the infantry sending a single outpost straight across the map. And because you've been busy doing drops, because you've been busy... Trying to build a laser turret and all that kind of stuff. You're going to have less units out. Now that outpost is probably going to cause havoc. And it's a pretty full outpost. I'm not sure if there's any minigunners inside there. I think there is. I think there's one. But again, it's going to catch a firebase. Oh, that's painful. That's painful. Firebase does get cancelled. Both dozers have now gone down. And this V is going to have a hard time. It's looking like infantry is too strong. Once Nuke goes down, he's dozer hunted. This V is going to get picked off. Yes, it does. And Vivid is taking next to no damage, really. I mean, that's the maximum damage he's taking is that. 
And that's it. Very, very quick game. Wow, wow, wow. Infantry just a little bit too strong and that drop didn't work out. Simple as that. 4-2 is the score. Okay, so jump into the next game. We're on Sand Scorpion. We've got a little bit of GLA here. Uh, Shea with the GLA Stealth in the blue color up in the north. Or top left, rather. We have Vivid with the green USA Vanilla. So, yeah. Interesting matchup. I don't think it's massively imbalanced in favor of either army. I think you probably have to give the edge to GLA Stealth. But it's not like massively imbalanced this is a very interesting place supply here from vivid i think he wants the long distance collect whilst also collecting from those crates he's going for a dose drop actually yeah interestingly place supply you probably could have an argument do you want to collect from there now because these crates are going to be here for the whole game whereas this you might not be able to collect it for the whole game uh, Doze drop actually on the top here, and this worker is caught with his pants down. Let's go down. There's a terrorist in the middle, actually. So Shea anticipated a, a dozer through the middle, which just tends to be a common strat. But the terrorist actually left the worker. Oh, it's not interesting anyway, because Vivid's actually going down here to, to deny the map control. So yeah, he's denying all the map control here. Question is, the first technical will probably load up with a couple of workers anyway and probably still drop them off, but... The first V by that time might be out to deny them. So I think this is good here from Vivid. I like it. It's not that common. You see a drop over here to stop that. And then also to go over here and stop this as well. So yeah, I do like it. And uh, this tunnel here is going to be found. It's only an 11% tunnel. So it will need to be cancelled. It does get cancelled. And I think Shay's only just upgraded to that. Our oh, arms dealer. This V here is probably a little bit of a mistake now. Because... Uh, has Vivid just anticipated a complete no arms dealer build and it would be purely oils? I think that's what he's anticipated. Because otherwise, this one technical can wipe that out anyway. Never mind two technicals. This tunnel over here is going to get up anyway. Uh, Viv Shea is completely secure in the mid. And there's two technicals roaming around over here now. He was looking for an oil capture there to try and deny it, but Vivid hasn't gone for the oil capture. That tunnel may be a little bit too far forward. I would like it just a little bit further back so it actually fights in tandem with that building. Because at the moment, the Vs could appear there later on. We could just take out that tunnel without that building's help. So it could be a bit of a mistake, but he has got another one anyway, so... Okay, it's a big technical push here, and these RPGs do get unloaded, but sadly for him, does not get any Vs. Whether there's still lag or not... What's going on there with that bit of terrain? You see that? <laughs> Notice all kind of weird stuff going on here. What's going on there? The shade behind this has not gone for any oils yet. It's gone for an extra supply, actually. It's got a more forward tunnel going up here. Shade is relentless with this pressure and aggression, and it's uh, been a decent performance from him every single game. And a dozer box back there. This is looking like a TNT. So, yeah, very, very nice. Ooh, he's going to get caught out here with all these technicals. Don't want to lose all there, man. That's your main army. Even though it's only a few techs, he it is still his main army. He, he has to trap himself over here now. Just run away and last as long as possible. Keep Vivid busy. Shade does have the option. Does he want to counterattack around the back and trap these Vs? But I would argue that he doesn't have the numbers right now. He doesn't have the numbers. If, if he preserved some more technicals, maybe. He's going to take out the ambulance, maybe. Ooh does take out the ambulance and vivid is now trapped in that corner but the, the question just comes back to has shea got the numbers and i don't think he has what one reason is he's dropped down that third supply so he's invested in all them workers 1500 for the supply so yeah like i said before you probably cut the production off a little bit he's not collecting on five workers on both of these supplies one random terrorist there i'm not going to achieve anything but just provide a bit of a scout just a, a quick check on where the v's are at the moment, yeah, he doesn't know, but now he does. Ooh. This is where it's going to come down to it. Like, that tunnel there, I'm pretty sure, can go down without the help of this bunker. I mean, it's helping a bit, but it's shooting at the drones, not actually the Vs. Ooh. Almost kills a V. Flashbang. evac And load back up, load back up. There's load it back up. So if you evac, the flashbang hits, it doesn't kill you. 
evac again from Shea. Very, very Ball nice indeed. So he does maintain his hold for the time being. A few fire bases go up, and he's got loads of Schnooks collected on one supply here, which is not, not efficient at all. Lays lock on one of the tentacles and Vivid continuing the push. Eh? Behind this is going for the oils. He's going to get two by the looks of things. Tentacles going down again in the mid. One does escape. One tunnel's being dropped. No supplies dropped over here yet for Shea. Shay's now on two oils, so you would imagine, yeah, Palace or an another arms leader or something is going to help him deal with these. I think if he gets two buggies, it could be could be really good for him. Got a sneaky worker here. I wonder if he's going to drop down a tunnel there, or would it just get killed by the firebase if it just keeps walking? See a few firebase hits here, can't you? Yeah, this supply is now going to go down. This is good XP for Vivid. You see, he's leading the way in terms of XP. But this worker looks like he's going to get all the way into this into the base. Could call that a size worker. It's a size tactic. Just send the worker randomly in and just start building a tunnel. Sometimes it will get up. But yeah, how is Viv how is Vivid going to continue this push into that bunker? I think he's still got flashbangs. And how is Shea going to deal with this? He's mined out on this supply now, so his economy is going to be weaker. He does have two oils, but he's also not collecting on any of these that he secured back here. He is building this tunnel around the back, though, and has Vivid seen it? He's not. Ooh, he has. He's seen it. He's seen it. Only just seen it. 87% tunnel. That could have caused him all kinds of problems, maybe even cost him the game if that tunnel had got up. Shay's getting an oil over here. Does get denied. There's a load of technicals out for Shea. He's now on a palace. Yeah, it's just the scary thing is these V numbers. Even though there's quite a few technicals out, especially when there is a bit of lag, which I think there is, then yeah, technical engagements can go worse. I actually prefer the lag with the Vs, I think, because you can kind of like go in in stages. The technicals have got a micro like equally as much, if not more. Because they're the faster and more fragile units, whereas these are like kind of rock solid. You can kind of move forward in stages, so. Uh, is that oil just going to get shot? I think he's got a ranger in there, so I don't know why he's not capturing it, but he just wants to kill it. He's got a sneaky tunnel here, actually. He's going to be applying the pressure. We've actually seen a TNT that I've actually completely missed. Went for the power, but it's actually failed anyway. These V's continuing to push in. Uh, Shay's now on one buggy. Palace seems to be garrisoned. It's got some units inside of there. I wonder if he'll be able to get the dozer hunt or not. Vivid seems reluctant to push in, whereas I think actually that might have been a good attempt. Uh, was it the search and destroy that actually got TNT? It could have possibly been that. It makes these Vs weaker. I can't remember if he had deployed that already or not. I can't remember. The Chinook here is still long distance letting from here, but there are RPGs here stopping that, and Shay's expanded to another supply now. Vivid's got 7k. Yeah, there was an argument, I think, for actually taking that fight then. So the, the argument would be, the longer you wait, the more buggies are getting out. And the more buggies get out, the more chance Shea has got. Now there's three and a Jarman. That's a lot harder than just a load of technicals and one V. Uh, sorry, one buggy that was before. Search and destroy now deployed. So I think that's what Vivid is waiting for. And this could be crunch time. And one V does fall. Shea sending in his army. Again, it's coming in more single file. Into more of a death blob of Vs. But 1v does go down, and Vivid's floating an insane amount of cash. He's got 7.5k. He's now spending some of it.
turn on the corner does get cleared and yeah who's ahead vivid ahead in terms of xp so once the a10 comes out it's going to be a juicy hit where pretty much wherever it hits there's no quads or stingers to stop it uh vivid has two oils but the v numbers are getting up he's got a market now as well so you imagine worker shoes and the buggy ammo upgrade is very soon And this oil here is going to fall, but there is a huge V-Army making its way across the map. And there's a lack of tunnels here and a lack of buggy ammo. It's pulling all of his stuff back. That oil has been spared for now. But there's so many buggies here. Needs a German. Needs a German. Because this laser lock is going to hurt. Technicals do come in. And these Vs are going to actually make their way over to this left-hand side. There's two tunnels here. But what's she going to do? Is she going to choose to pop from here? He's got the buggy ammo upgrade now. And yeah, it, it really, a lot of it comes down to this fight. If if Shay wins this fight without many losses. And how is Vivid even going to escape from this situation? He's going inside of these buildings now. He's got the flashbangs in. He's clearing all the buildings with the flashbangs. Missile defenders going inside of this one. He's going to clear this tunnel with the missile defenders. But the buggies are raining damage down. From long range. Ooh, one V that does get picked off. Toxin track to moving in. Toxin track to get picked off as well. And I don't think Vivid is going to be allowed to, to escape from here. Vivid's actually dropping down an airfield. I see a few players doing this, you know, but I'm not convinced it's the most efficient thing to do. Because even a couple of quads tend to wreck Comanches. You need a few guaranteed kills. But there are not many quads. He's making two quads now. Maybe he's seen the airfield, or maybe he has got map hacked like Fargo accused him of just a few days ago. <laughs> Fargo and Shay did a challenge against each other, and even though Shay was on gentle, Fargo said, oh, he's got map hack, and he was stream sniping at the same time, he said, or something like that. So, yeah, crazy. This could be a bad engagement for either player here, really, but the help of this V here, helping out things for Vivid, but Shay has survived most of his buggies and he's got loads more buggies back here now as well and three v's went down only a couple of units went down for shay if any actually third arms leader has actually gone up for shay but vivid has cleared out all of this side but it's just this not this army in a one-on-one -on -one engagement with the correct micro shay should win it yeah one quad against one comanche so far this oil has gone down we're coming down to not many units and not... Well, well, there is supplies, but not many people are collecting on supplies at the moment. Uh, but battle for this little plateau thing, this little island in the corner, does mean a lot. Is Shay going to scout now the Comanches? He, he has no idea at the moment there are two Comanches out. And yeah, the problem with USA Comanches is that they are not stealthed. Oh, this could be it for Shay, to be honest, because the Comanches are coming in and picking off these buggies and all the quads are cleared. There was one quad back here. You see how fast that Comanche's going down there, just the one quad. Shay continues to hold for now, but Vivid has now cleared this island and he's now collecting there as well. Probably wants to repair it, actually. I don't even think it's worth collecting with it. Just repair it and then collect, I think. But yeah, Shay is still collecting on this supply in the mid. He's mined out on his main, but Vivid has as well. It all comes down to the fight for this, and Shay's had control of this for like what? Most or all of the game? At least like 90% of the game. But Shay needs to continue the push here and stop Vivid collecting, because if Vivid collects from here, meanwhile he's just, oh no, he's not got that oil, it has died. It all comes down to this. Yeah, tense moments here for, for both players for sure. Supply drop zone being built there for Vivid. 
No more markets for Shea, but he has lost a market. I imagine that would be to A10 that I've missed earlier. Yeah, a bit of a 10 standoff here because Vivid's hiding behind the supply. If he takes the fight, he'll probably lose his Vs. If Shea loses too many quads, then the, the Comanches will probably come in. There is a Colonel Burton here. No Jean Mankell, though. Colonel Burton can't do very much at the moment, but Shea needs to stop this collection. That's what he needs to do. And he is killing him. This Shinuki is going to fall. That's probably the one I said should be repaired. That RPG there. Yeah, baby. That's what you need to do. $120 in the bank from the bounty. Uh, Shea could think about maybe selling that supply. Get a tiny bit of cash back. I mean, what would you get? 650 for selling a supply, I think you get. A ten comes in. Now, where is that going to be? Ooh! He went for a potluck shot. I mean, if you hit the tunnel, a guaranteed hit, you would you would have definitely hit the tunnel. But yeah, how can he know that that army was going back? Nice little dodge there from Shea. Whether he anticipated that was coming, whether he's running map hack like Fargo said, <laughs> of course that's a joke. But uh, yeah, either way, he's dodged it. Whether it's spider sense or whatever, he's he went back. Sometimes you just don't want to take a fight. You want to go. You want to go back so you can macro at home. You can do some stuff at home, and whilst you're safe, then you can go in and attack a little bit later on. But yeah, right now Vivid's moved out of position. He's clearing this mid position though. It's a bit of a one for one trade, but Vivid is losing all of his Chinooks here, and these are more expensive than losing a supply and a few workers. Ooh, Comanche's coming in once again, and these. Units are getting wrecked. Two technicals, one buggy goes down so far, but there is one quad here. And that Comanche survives, but one Comanche does go down. Comanche's still here, reigning supreme, and these buggies are coming in. They're like, screw it. We don't care about this Comanche. We want to take out some more buggies. Uh, sorry, some more Vs. There's more of quads here now to defend. And this is the scrappiest game of USA GLA I've seen on this map in a hell of a long time. Uh, economic lead for Vivid, because he has a supply drop zone. He also has buildings here so he technically has a bit of vision and control there uh, Vivid has the supply lines upgrade that is a super tech not a technical you want to lose not, not that you want to lose anything at this point Chase sold his main supply he's got enough money but Sh Vivid's actually collecting from the middle Lays lock here on one on one buggy. Every unit counts at this point, so little loss there. It's definitely a, a big win there for Vivid. Yeah, very interesting game. Very, very interesting. Colonel Burton's still roaming around, so he knows where this whole army is. But Vivid is just going to move into the base, and that might just kill Shea because there's no defense here at all at the moment. But when Shea's killing all these units, he is getting bounty money and he's getting some veterancy. These V's still roaming around. Kills a few workers. Not tempted to engage the palace just yet. Remember Vivid's got well, all the map vision because look at all these drones. And Colonel Burton there as well, so yeah. Viv Shea's got a big army, but Vivid knows exactly where everything is. He's still collecting from the middle long distance. Could Shea just go to the base now? Could he go to the base? Actually moving out towards the middle. He's got plenty of quads here. No AP ammo, but I don't think he needs it against this, that single Comanche. Ashnuke gets pulled. Could be a base trade here. Vivid's actually checking to see how many RPGs are inside the palace. And it's only two. Shea knows he needs the defense, so he is coming back. Super Tech gets laser locked. The pilot there is going to go down. Missile Defender is going to go down. Yeah, tense situation. I can sense the tension in the air, that is for sure. Lays lock on the super tech. Missile defender goes down. Two units go down in total there for Shea. That's a more expensive loss to Shea because he lost a buggy there as well. Quad's going to move in, but the buggies are here. Sorry, the Vs are here. I keep getting them units mixed up. Colonel Burton is going to wreck these, you would imagine. Ooh. Colonel Burton's actually walked straight past, and there's losses on both sides. These Vs are once again trapped. Where's the Comanche though? Did the Comanche go down? Yep, 
Yeah, at the moment, Shay only has this. Uh, he has nothing else. He has no means of getting back into the game now because he's pumped all of his stuff into... into units. So he has to win the game with what, what few units you see here. He's going to get the crush on Pathfinder. It's very close. That Pathfinder really living on the edge. I think it is going to go down eventually. Ooh, that's a decent A10. Kills two units. Only four buggies remain. If you lose them four buggies, your chances are done. Because they're the only things that can guarantee to kill these Vs. This is looking very bad, actually, for Shay. He's lost two buggies there. Oh, no, sorry, one buggy. Pathfinder there gets moved. I think he moved that by mistake. Colonel Burton here picks off two buggies, and that's that's got to be GG. Yeah, you can't win from that. You, you need them buggies. Yeah, GG. Shay knows it immediately. Nice game. Very, very nice game indeed. Will Shea be able to win the reverse? Getting very, very tense in the room right now. 4-3 is the score. Okay, so jump into the reverse. I've got Shea with the USA Vanilla. In the blue, down in the bottom right, we've got uh, where we Vivid with the green uh, GLA Stealth. Just in case you're wondering what the OOE means, it's just his clan name. He's in the clan OOE, which is Order of the Elites. Which is Excal's in there, Spaulding's in there, Logic is in there. So, War Factory Barracks for Shea, but he is going for an oil cap. Three oils to be precise. Now, hmm, against a strong, against a strong GLA. I mean, I've been in this experience myself before. You go for an oil cap and a technical can just simply walk around the map, deny that, deny that. A second technical can just go over here and deny that. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit of a gamble here for Shea. Has he even got the uh, capture upgrade though is the question. No, he hasn't actually. He's not gone for the capture upgrade. So yeah, that's an interesting build. He hasn't gone for the capture upgrades. So that will naturally make Vivid send his first technical. Probably empty. Oh no, it's got some stuff in it. But he's going to want to deny these oil caps. So you see he's got a, a terrorist over here denying that. But it's keeping him busy. And then Shea will probably upgrade to the capture a little bit later on. Technical moving in on this left one. He will want to stop the Ranger. But will he click on it and see that there's no capture upgrade? Let's get the kill on that Ranger. Bad news that V. How is it going to get out of that situation? I don't think it is. Blaze Lock comes in on the Toxin Tractor. One technical has already fallen, but this V is doomed, I think. Because that, yeah, it's gone down. I think this is a bad start for Shay. A uh, very bad start indeed. Losing your first V. You've gone for the oils, but you don't have the capture upgrade. So what has that really achieved? Because you've spent, what, 675 on ranges? Have not achieved anything. Meanwhile, Vivid's expanded to a sec uh, sorry, a third supply. He's not got many workers on his main, actually. But he's got loads over here. He's only got two on his main. Second arm's nearly going up. And sh uh, Vivid's actually getting his oils. Looking very, very good for Vivid. I think t the tides are turning, you know. The tides are turning. Does it come down to the matchups and the maps? Some people are stronger than others on certain maps and certain matchups. Or... Is it one player's getting warmed up? Is one player getting tired? There's so many variables you can look into. But yeah, I mean, based on just look at the green all over the map. He has the map. She has no oils. He has a. F okay, he's got a decent ish army, but. Like, wh where can he really push at this point? Where can he push? You see the difference in the placement of the tunnels here? They're all going to fight together with that bunker. I mean, it might not get up. He's going to lose another V here. That does get cleared. 
I think he has flashbangs. I think he did get cleared out with flashbangs. The tentacles coming in from the back here, and this V army is now trapped between a rock and a hard place, as the saying goes, in, in England at least. RPGs here going to focus on one of the Vs. That V is almost down. If you miss out, the fin is there, get run over, and I think the V is now pretty empty. You've only got two full Vs, the rest are completely empty. Shea dropping down a firebase in a very interesting position. Like, what is that even achieving? Like, why not drop it here? Block off the whole entrance. If he's even getting another oil, he's getting his palace. And I'm definitely sensing a shift of momentum here. Shea had such an amazing start. Wasn't he like 3 1 or 4 1 up? And now, by the looks of it, we're heading towards a 4 4. Technical Kim's in the base, and I think that might be. No, not the last dozer. He's still got two. And who comes in, it's the War Factory, which is just more and more damage. The rest of the damage, of course, being the losses of the Vs. Palace is going up, but Shane knows it because he's got a really well-placed drone. He can see everything. <clears throat> and I'm sensing a little bit of V-death here because these Vs are trapped and Shay just quits. Was that a rage quit? Or was that, did he say GG? Who knows? Yeah, we're on 4 4. So, yeah, is this a shift of momentum? Is that going to mentally get to Shay now? Is he going to be able to still pull through? Or does it all simply come down to the matchups and the maps? Was that Vivid's map? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Let's uh, see what happens in the next one. 4 4 is the score. Okay, so Planet Corion is the map. Down in the south, we've got, sorry, up in the north. I always do that on this map. I always get them, this, I always think I'm in the south position. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, we've got Shay up in the north with the Jilly Stealth in the blue. Down in the south, we've got OOE Vivid with the green China Infantry. So we saw a similar matchup before on Natural Threats, I think it was. We saw Demo against Inf. And yeah, Shay won both sides of it. Yeah, Shay won both sides with the Jilly and with the Inf. So with Stealth versus Inf, you would imagine might be able to pull off the same thing but like i say shift the momentum is vivid going to come back here okay truck rush straight down the middle of the map no terrorists in place but he's not going for that anyway but there's going to be another tunnel here so this truck is not going to achieve all that much unless it goes all the way around the back and hits here but there's another terrorist there terrorist here now The giant cow. Yeah, you're gonna die. I mean, why did he descend it into a terrorist? Surely you just keep it more busy? Like, go around and keep him busier for longer, maybe? Tech RPG is unloaded a little bit premature though because he's not going to be able to get the dozer. Terrorist is still just chilling. It's just going to be left there, I think. Tech RPG once again. Is it going to hit this dozer? The dozer's going to survive. Bit of an awkward pop here from uh, Shay. He really wants it. Ooh, it's going to be close. <laughs> oh, baby. He's got it. He's got it. Is he going to get the other one though? Where the hell is the other one? The other one is over here. Pretty secure because he's got all these buildings. A bunker is a little bit damaged. Shay's going to head over to the middle, but there are mines. I think this is a bit of a desperation if he if he just charges in there. He would have lost that for, for sure. Even if there was no mines there, you would argue that he'd struggle to kill the dozer still anyway. So, I mean, that's a wise decision there from Shay. I think if, if he'd have gone in there, then that would have sensed mental, mental pressure and mental weakness for sure. RPGs here still probing at the entrance of this base over here. 
One terrorist is out. Will he be able to get some trucks? Maybe. He's going to get one, I think. Yeah, he gets one. Very, very nice. Toxin tried to here to clear out these buildings. A little bit of a cow check. Both cows are fine and intact. Toxin tried to here continuing the push. No evac here from Vivid. Bit weird, but I think he's paying attention over here. But if uh, Shay manages to get hold of that bunker, these trucks are going to be in the world of pain. And this dozer is... Feel like living on the edge again. Effective might even go down here. Is Shay not even paying attention? He could have clicked on that dozer. He probably still can actually. Oh, don't know. Dozer is. Uh, he's got a flamer coming in vivid. <laughs> Two. Tr oh no, one truck gone down. This truck is low. Tech RPG here, trying to kill the flamer. Flamer does clear out the bunker, starts the flame war, and I think the cow's going to get fried. The cow's dead. There's something in the place of the cow. <laughs> and Vivid is doing a comeback. He, he, he is making it happen, isn't he? He is making it happen. He's not taking two losses with the infantry. TNT comes in very, very nice on one of the outposts. But is that only delaying the inevitable? Because Shea has lost all his front area. Yes, yeah, sure, he killed a few trucks here and there. But this uh, outpost push, once again, has cleared him from the whole mid. But there's a sneaky tunnel. There's a sneaky tunnel, of course, there is from Shay. And the power plant here is going down. And I suppose now Vivid has cleared that area. The sting has been taken out of his attack because of that one TNT. And all of a sudden, Shay is still looking very much in this. In fact, Shay is now looking ahead because with that power gone down, the production is now slowed. This war factory is now in danger because Shay's not taking the pressure off. Meanwhile, Shea has got this oil over here on the right, and he's got the oil at the top left. He's got, again, a few more defensive tunnels, getting a palace. This is all of a sudden looking in much more favor of Shea. Zero hours is a cool, cool game. He look away from 30 seconds, and suddenly it looks in favor of the other player. And this is a big game, a very big game, because if Shea loses this one, then the momentum is definitely with Vivid, because he's done a, a massive comeback to be up for the first time, but... Shea is not having it here. Shea does not want to lose here. Shea wants to wants to win. He's never won the World Series before. Quads there do pop up in an outpost, and this TNT is going to get in and hits the War Factory. Very, very nice. The damage here and the aggression from Shea, very, very nice. And a bit of an oversight there from Vivid, allowing a worker straight down the left and uh, establish a tunnel. I think that one mistake of letting that tunnel establish is probably... Is it going to cost him the game? It's certainly looking a lot worse than it was before. Shea wants to take the fight here. Loses one quad, but he pops open the outpost. And... Flame are going to go down. Will he pop some more quads here and take this fight? Interesting decision. But is he just... Yeah, he's attacking elsewhere anyway. He's just not even interested. He's just leaving... Vivid to attack that and clear that up. But meanwhile, attacking over here on this left-hand side. And this war factory is now going down. Uh, Shay, you want to be careful, man, of that bunker. Because it is causing big damage to your army. Got a rebel here. He's now got a palace. Imagine maybe Jarman's going to be soon. And yeah, maybe Shay, like we said before... Does it all come down to the matchups? People are stronger at different matchups. And if Shea wins this one, it means out of the three China infantries versus any kind of GLA, Shea has won three of three of them. Even though he lost the last few previous games. And the momentum was with Vivid. He's just looking too strong in this matchup to me. Oh, is the cow going to get killed here? I know the truck actually goes kindly round the cow. Yeah, one cow did get set on fire. Oh no, that thing there. <laughs> Thought it spawned where the cow died, but I think it was just next to it. Uh, technical for Shea. Is he after the last dozer? Is the last dozer already dead? No, last dozer's here. Never supply there from Shea. I think that's a little bit too far forward. I prefer it there. Will the minigun find the worker here? I don't think so. Yeah, it's interesting. Vivid wants 
<laughs> wants the oil, but he, he can only see the worker. He doesn't know about this tunnel, that stealth rebel. Oh, Minigun that goes down. Let me get taken out trying to clear this bunker, but the outposts do escape. Uh, Shay is definitely ahead. Uh, market is up. He's two oils up. Oh, baby. He's even got that one. How the hell has he even got that one? Didn't even see that. How has he got that oil? <laughs> he must have sent a bike there ages ago. Shay's actually building a CC, but he just wanted the uh, bounty money because he is level three now. If it's getting an oil, he's building a CC, but he is looking in a bad shape here. Yeah, look at this. Buggies are out. He's got, he's got flanks on both sides, Shay. He's building a supply in the mid. I don't even know what that was there. Was that a demo? A demo bike? Did he put a terrorist on a bike or something? I don't even know what that was. An attack on this right-hand side now. So you notice he, he's using GLA to the max. As soon as, he's t uh, as soon as Vivid's pushing in one place, Shay's taking the fight elsewhere, and he's took down that bunker now. Yeah, I did say that supply looked a little bit too far forward. Has to be sold now. I doubt whether it's paid for itself or not. RPGs here are going to do some damage to these outposts. Refinery is killed. Vivid is still very much in it. He's got a CC. He's got his propaganda center. I just feel that Shay, with this with this composition now of buggies, quads, no AP ammo, but he does have a Jarm in there. He's got RPGs, Toxin Tractor. That composition is so deadly for the infantry. But interestingly, Vivid's ahead in terms of XP. Very, very interesting. I think it comes down to like, what units you're killing. If you're killing a quad and you're killing tunnels, I think they give more XP. Nice carpet there. He takes the control formation off. You do that by pressing Control and F. They all move as slow as the slowest unit, which would probably be the RPG. But these buggies now, look at the damage. That power plant goes down so, so fast. This is a mine drop, I think. Outside of the war factory. Nice to get a few workers and clear the mines. New power's being dropped, but I think Shay... Uh, ever since the oils, I think the oils are a big part here. Got himself on a palace, got himself a number of buggies out, and what can Vivid really do here? Can he can he even fight that? Because the Jarman Kel. The buggies will no doubt rip through this. And the Jarman Kel just clear up everything for free. So yeah, Vivid's in a bad way. He's not got subliminal meshin yet, but he's only just built a prop though, to be fair. Was the forward supply any good here for for Vivid? Should he have done two supplies, War Factory Barracks more safe in his base? Could have been an option. Or was it that sneaky tunnel that's changed the game here? But yeah, Vivid, let's not count Vivid out. I mean, sometimes I do that prematurely, but just like... Oh, this fight is so painful. Two outposts go down. Three outposts go down. And Jarman Cal is wrecking everything. But there are so many infantry, though. They do focus the Jarman down, and Jarman does get cleared. But there's an angry mob out now. There's a supply here. Annoying tank enter. Even just an angry mob is so hard. You just attack me with an angry mob, or guard mode with an angry mob. It has the AK-47 upgrade, and it can just wreck everything. It requires so much micro or um, control to deal with, like a flight you need to make a flamer or infernos or migs or something. Artillery, and that is going to be a beast shot. If that hits where I think it's going to hit, but nah, Shay knows it. It's going to move out of the way. Moves out of the way very, very nice. A little bit predictable, maybe, and I think if he's got a radar van, he probably can see it coming across the map. But nah, he doesn't, so maybe his map. <laughs> <laughs> map hacking like Fargo said but nah of course we know he's not he's on gentle I'm downloading all these replays from gentle Vivid victorious. has been defeated Shay is looking at the master for GLA's versus infantry that is for sure 5-4 is the score
Okay, so next match. Very, very close. Ed edge, you've seen stuff. I think this could be one of the best uh, quarterfinals we are going to see. Of course, there's size of against Fargo is the other one. Uh, Google already played role. So Google's already waiting in the semi-final. So yeah, things are heating up here. We've got Shade down in the south with the China Infantry. And up in the north, we have Vivid with the Green GLA Stealth. So yeah, as I said before, out of the three games they've played where Infantry and GLA made an appearance in the games, Shea has won three of three so far. But yeah, where Vivid won both was the USA GLA. Uh, USA Stealth on um, Sand Scorpions. So maybe that's his map, his kind of matchup that, is, that favors him. I'm going to get in nice and early to stop the worker on the right side. Now he's going to drop a bunker here, which will deploy mines. And it's a little bit off, but I'm pretty sure you won't be able to get anything through. Now, it is a bit off. You would be able to sneak a technical there. You would. I mean, again, here goes inside the building. An interesting fight, to be honest, because it looks like that tunnel is losing an equally amount as much HP as this building. Maybe the tunnel will win eventually. First technical is out for Vivid, and it will be a Tech Terror. This oil is being capped, but does Vivid even know about that? I don't think he does, you know. And this is going to be an interesting moment. A big moment, actually. He gets that oil. Big advantage. Ooh, denied at the last moment. That's painful for Vivid. Sorry for, for uh, Shay. He wanted that. He really wanted that. Uh, he is sending a minigunner over here, though, to get this oil. No mines here. We know that. But that is a setup to have mines on the, on the supply. That does look like the setup for it. Vivid goes for the risky TNT on the War Factory. And is he going to get through that little gap that I pointed out? No, he's not going to go through it. If he got through there and denied that oil, that would be massive. Would be massive. Okay, Mini going to back out for Shea. He really wants that oil on the right side. Vivid, meanwhile, just on two supplies. He's getting his tunnels in all kinds of positions. Both cows are fine. Sneaky flamer here for Vivid, and Vivid has seen it. Hmm, is it still going to cause loads of damage, though? He could flame all over here and kill the workers. Uh, he's going to try to just go in. He is going to kill some workers if they're not moved. They are getting moved. Oil denied once more, but he has got this oil and he's getting a prop now. Yeah, it's not that common for infantry to go for the oils with the minigunners in the beginning because they're expensive. 350 for one compared to like China Vanilla, you get $300 red guards and you get two red guards. There's a significant price increase. But obviously, once you get to and, you, and your economy gets flowing, obviously, it's very, very decent. And that oil is going to be captured. Persistence pays rewards. <laughs> I just made that up. It's not a saying. Okay, so Vivid moving in now with a load of quads. I think these infantry here are going to get picked off. And that oil will go down pretty quick. So probably barely paid for itself with the minigunner and the capture upgrade. But he has had this one as well, though. Uh, I would like to see Subliminal Meshin just double the healing rates. And I think this path here is a really good path to push because there are no tunnels there. But is Shay going to head to this middle area anyway? Because he could kill that tunnel. Vivid chooses to pop his stuff. There's no RPGs there, so is that a wise call? Because you just lost two quads for nothing. That's classic Fargo Pop, really. I know we laugh and joke and say a Fargo Pop when there's a carpet bomb and he pops all of his tunnel and stuff. That's not a true... A Fargo Pop is where you, you 
you make a decision to pop and fight an army that you can't win. And then you... Yeah, you just lose things for no reason when you couldn't have taken the fight anyway. That's what a Farga pop really is. But it is funny we just say Farga pop to anything. If an A10 hits like 20 quads, we call it a Farga pop. <laughs> or maybe 8 quads if they all pop from a tunnel as it, as it hits. That's just bad timing. But yeah, uh, Vivid actually continuing the push forward. There's still quite a lot of green spread around the map. This here will go down. But what's that really going to do furthermore? Don't really know. What there gets disabled. Uh, flame wall up, up this cliff would be pretty good, you know. Oh, needs to be careful of the Lotus. I don't know if she can... Can, can, the, can the Flamer kill the Lotus? When it's attacking an RPG nearby? I don't actually know. Wouldn't want to risk it, to be honest, with a $1,500 unit. And yeah, Vivid's creeping forward with tunnels and stuff, but... That's all well and good, but it's the, it's the base that is the, the, the problem at the moment. I really think a flame wall up there would be really nice. Why is Shay not doing that? Not a lot of people think... Not a lot of people think the same way, but a, a flamer up there would be so, so good right now. You could kill that supply basically for free, probably even the tunnel. Yeah, we, we've seen that before. We saw... I don't know if it was an Asus game or something, where he... He did the flame wall up there. There's no reason why you wouldn't do that up there now. You could kill that bunker as well before he garrisons it later on. But he's still making a move around, killing this. Counter-attack from Vivid over here on the right. There's another massive army here, though, for Shea. And there's a terrorist here. Even though this counter-attack looks kind of okay, I still think Shea's way ahead. He's got Sylvan Meshin now, and he's got a way stronger army in both places of the map. He can win this fight, and he can win this fight. But Vivid does pop open. His tunnel pops a load of quads and RPGs and does take out one outpost. This supply is at risk of going down. A minigunner here will clear up the terrorist. And I mean, Vivid's still got all that he needs. He's got the two supplies, he's got the oil, but the problem is. Shay's XP because he's killed so much because he's been around the map clearing all this kind of stuff. But Vivid's still applying the pressure with his quads. Still trying to cause damage. He's still got loads of quads and these uh, uh, outposts are coming in single file into the meat grinder. This army here just chilling at the moment. I think you need to be using everything at the moment, Shay. But is, is he panicking a little bit because of this pressure or just being a little bit overwhelmed? So that goes down. Vet 2 Flamer. Another supply drop down there for Vivid in the middle. Yeah, Vivid doesn't want to go 4-0 down in terms of the GLA infantry games, and we're seeing that there. The carpet bomb comes in, kills two RPGs and three quads. That is decent. You'll take that. And he damaged the tunnels as well. Worker there is going to get found. There is a sneaky tunnel here right close to the power plant. Uh, I still think Shay's ahead, even though he's lost that supply. Because Shay's now going to be able to clear this supply. He's still in cash, actually. Is Vivid going to spend all of his cash quickly so he can't steal much? Nope. <clears throat> Shay now wants to clear this. He's level 4. This area is going to go down another... Well, that tunnel being rebuilt, rather. This supply is going to go down. This supply is going to mine out soon, but so is that one, though. So it's a one-for-one -one trade. But Shay's expanded over here and got two supplies, though. Lotus is still in cash still, and Vivid is not spending all of his cash. He is popping some quads, though. But the cash does get stolen. Because that Lotus is more than paid for itself. It's a 4k difference. If you steal 2k and add 2k to your bank balance, 2k difference. Artillery comes in. and Now, is that going to be here on the workers? No, actually, it's going to be on the mid. Feels the work is there in the mid. But Shay is really clearing up, you know, he, he's clearing everything. Look at this. It'd be nice for him to get that, actually, because he has the capture upgrade already. Sneaky worker back here, though. Does he have a radar van, Vivid? I don't think so. So you probably won't see the, the green dot he's got there at the bottom. There are a few buggies out now, but is Shay just too far ahead? Because he's got these two extra supplies here. 
I'm just going to rebuild as many. It's going to be on three supplies. That oil is dead. This main has actually got more on it. 27 compared to 21. But Vivid is pushing him back over here. And that supply there is going to go down. There are mines here because of the bunker, though, so you can't push much further. Buggies from range still causing damage. ECM deflects most of the missiles. And the barracks at least will fall, but these two bunkers here are going to hold the fort for the time being. But meanwhile, Shea is moving out with his absolutely monstrous army over here on this right-hand side. Worker here. Worker there got killed. Trade off in terms of land on both sides, but I'm I'm less convinced that Vivid can get anything more done here because this ECM in these bunkers is going to take ages. But meanwhile, Shay's just moving into the main base, and this is the this is the key area for Vivid. If he loses this, can he come back? This looks like a TNT, and it is going to hit one outpost. Ooh, not even one outpost yet. Buggy's coming in from the back. Quad's coming in from the back. Inferno's picked off. Terrorist goes down without even achieving anything. And now the palace, the barracks, all of this stuff is in danger. Meanwhile, Shea can just continue the spam. He's getting another army here. Shea is looking like unbeatable here today, at least. In the Inf GLA matchup. He's not backing down. Has he been practicing it? Is he just naturally good at it? Is Vivid just naturally a bit weak at it? I don't think we're seeing a weak GLA play here. We're definitely seeing a strong GLA play. Barracks that goes down. Buggy's coming in. I mean, his army is technically trapped now. If Vivid was like level 5 and got an Anthrax bomb, it could be very, very decent. But the question is, is he? And he's not. He's only <laughs> on level 3. But meanwhile, Shea is almost on level 5. This army is getting cleared slowly. But the question is, what remains here for Shea? And he's building a load of Infernos. So the army is getting weaker, that is for sure. But these buggies now in danger. One buggy goes down to... Oh, almost. He could have finished that, I think. Shea's continuing the push now in the middle because he's had all this free time. Back in his base to build what he wants. He's on all these extra supplies. Only one cow dead so far. And although Vivid is clearing this up, he's floating 11k and he's taking massive losses here himself. So he's only got three quads left. Uh, he's not spending his money. He's not focusing very much on, on his macro whilst he's under all this pressure. I mean, fair enough, but you're going to need to if you want to win the game. Uh, Mind Drop comes in. I think EMP is going to be next as well. And these buggies now are going down and this is looking very, very bad for Vivid. In fact, I cannot see any way... He is going to come back from this now. Despite having 8.5k, just look at the amount of stuff Shea has. Airfield going up. Vivid taking so many losses there. Vivid is not collecting on any middle supplies or anything. Shea not getting that refinery is a definite mistake. I think Vivid could have... Uh, Shea could have killed that earlier. With a carpet and artillery, for sure. Mine drop here is going to be problematic. He just needs to clear that with some uh, workers. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. Carpet and artillery. Is that going to be on the oil? It's looking like it is headed in that direction, which I like. It's one of the main things keeping Vivid in the game. I mean, yeah, you take it that oil. It could be a level 3 artillery, actually. Could kill it in one. Yeah, it is. Don't even need the carpet. Level 3 artillery. What a beast. Has he just taken level 3 and not taken the EMP? Because I haven't seen EMP. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen EMP. Interesting discussion whether you get level 3 artillery or whether you select um, level 2 artillery and get the EMP. Which one do you prefer? I, I tend to prefer having 2 because the EMP can save your life. Whereas an extra level 3 artillery, although it's impactful and kills that 1 oil, 
An EMP. Yeah, oh, here it is. Here it is, baby. Look, look at the impact of that. Oh, my. How many quads have gone down there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven quads disabled. There are still two here causing damage to these trucks, but even those two are going to go down to the Firestorm. Insane d DPS, insane damage here from the Infernos. That's a TNT. This killed two units. But Vivid is just taking too many losses. Every fight he takes head on with this beast army, Vivid has been feared. Every fight he takes on with this army, he's just, uh, yeah, Shay's just looking too strong in that matchup. And that could seal the deal because he only needs one more now. If he, if he gets one imbalanced matchup, like Ed, Super Weapon now or something, he will be super happy with that. Because even if it goes 1 1, he doesn't care. He just needs one more to get himself across the line. So GG, well played, and on to the next. Okay, so on to the next game. We've got Shade down in the south of Tournament Desert with the Gilet Tox in the blue. A decent army to have, but what is he against? He is against... Ooh! <laughs> oh, baby! Oh, baby, baby. He's against the infantry for Vivid in the green in the north. Well, well, well. After we just said... In the GLA Infantry games, Shea is 4-0. He hasn't lost any of the GLA Infantry games. But now to be on TD, when you have Tox against Infantry, how the hell is Vivid going to win that one? He is going to need some insane play. And it looks like he is going to be doing a Helix. Uh, he's going to go for it. He's going to go for a Helix. Yeah, it's going to be a Helix. I mean, the Terrorist straight down the middle will reveal this. But is the Terrorist going to go straight down the middle? That is the question. Is Shea going to anticipate here there will be a Helix? He... A little bit of a delay there. Yeah, quite a delay. Upgrading his arms dealer. So his first quad will be a, a few seconds delayed. Many going to hear spots the terrorist so shay at the moment can only see this he does not know there's a helix being prepared hmm what is shay gonna do i think a stinger here wouldn't be a bad idea and here as well first quad is out Bunker being deployed over here on the right hand side uh those over here just looking for a worker does not find anything makes a v turn I was going to say a U-turn. Looks more like a V. Helix is being loaded up. And Shay is continuing the quad spam. Only two out so far, though, I think. Helix is out. And Shay will hear it now. Now it's on the edge of the fog. And he will see it right now. Tech, Terra, with some RPGs being prepared. Helix is over here on this right-hand side. And Shay sees it. Pops his quads. But the Helix moving in anyway and Shea bails on it. Shea bails on that fight. That's a decent start. Very, very decent start indeed. Barracks goes down as well. It's going to clear the mid now, you would imagine. This is a TNT. He's going to hit the mines. Oh, baby, Shay. <laughs> Shay. <laughs> Oh man, he's run, it, he's run it into the mines. He's a supply down. He does have quite a few quads out though, and he could just go straight across the map and pile on the pressure with these units because there's not a lot that Helix could do. In fact, Shea might want to... Sorry, Vivid might want to think about evac in that and loading up an outpost and then get a flame man because right now he's going to have Shea knocking on his door. Uh, Shea is building a second supply again in the mid. Shea is not messing around. He realizes he's taking some damage. He realizes Vivid will be a bit weak back at home now. So he puts the pressure on straight away. And the power plant here will fall. Power plant now being rebuilt. A little bit slow there from Vivid. Would like to see that a little bit sooner.
All the quads here will get cleared up and the Sinus is moving its way round the back. It is almost 100% full now in terms of HP. Unloads of stuff next to the arms dealer. But this quad here has survived. And these trucks are now going to feel some pain. But these uh, quads here are going to have a hard time. They are now moving in, focusing down the tank engines. That's what you want to focus down. And coming in from an angle like that is good as well. But Vivid does lose all of his tank engines and this quad is still chilling. I don't know how it survived on the mines there. But sometimes that does happen. What kind of does go down and Shea is stabilized now on two supplies. He's got control of the mid. He's got control of this bunker. And yeah, I'm, I've just got a feeling of deja vu times five now because it's just another one of their matchups that Shea just gradually gets himself more and more into. And even though that Helix was really successful in the beginning... Uh, Shea's still in a good position now. He's even getting another supply back here. He's getting pushed back. Flame of the Air has gone down. Vivid now dropping down to Propaganda Center. Remember, if Shea wins one more, he is out. No oil cap from either player yet. You would imagine Vivid's waiting for the Propaganda to be built to get the lowest out. Much more um, quick way of getting both of the oils. Well, you've actually got a chance of getting that oil with the lowest. So Vivid decides to push out. He's cleared the middle now with this Flamer. He's got a decent amount of outposts. TNT coming in though, probably from Shea. And that's going to be bad news if they hit. He doesn't really kill that much. He killed one Flamer with the help of the quads. But Vivid is having more success now. It's success rather. He's got his oil now. He's got a bunker on this right hand side. There is a tunnel over here though. Shay continuing to produce quads. And now attacking was left on side. So whilst he can't take the fight here, he is taking the fight to Vivid elsewhere where he can win the fight. And this barracks is going to go down. The power is going to go down. This bunker is going to go down. So Vivid's got a decision to make now. Is he going to go back and defend that or is he going to continue the push straight down the middle? I think he's realized he has to go back. No subliminal mesh here. And we've seen that late a few times these games, I think. Power there goes down. Bunker's already dead. Vivid continuing the push here with the Flamers. CC. Ooh, what happened there? Interesting. Was that a hijacker or something? No, it wouldn't have been a hijacker, was it? It's Tox. Yeah, weird. I don't know, I don't know exactly what that was. Flamers there in the middle do get cleared up. And another tunnel being dropped down in the mid. Doesn't need to be careful because that Helix is around. Got a Lotus here disabling a quad that's inside the tunnel. Interesting. This is a bad fight for Shea. I don't know why he's taking this fight because he's lost four or almost four quads. Lost three. Should focus down the weak outpost there. Oh, he's probably that's why he's focusing here and killing the dozer. Is that the last? It's the last dozer. That's got to be it. Oh, baby, that's painful because you just lost the helix and the dozer in a space of two seconds. So that's why Shea wasn't paying attention there. It's got bigger impact plays elsewhere. Took out the, the helix. And Dozer, and Shea is now, uh, yeah, Shea, Shea is ahead for sure, but Shea doesn't have his oil. Doesn't have the oil. Uh, this could be a TNT. If that is a TNT, oh, baby. Oh, if it's got enough minigunners in there that shuts everything down. That does make all the difference, because now this outpost army can push across the map. 
Outpost army continuing the push. Tunnel there has gone down. There's a few terrorists here and around. I think you can actually capture that oil from up the cliff, can't you? With the, with the Lotus, I think. Shay just needs to hold. He just needs to hold. Terrorist there hits the uh, outpost. Rod cannons are getting picked off. The Vet 2 quad there will get picked off. Uh, what does Shay even do here? Does he go for the base trade and just try to drop down as many tunnels as possible to try and delay? Another TNT coming in here. Doesn't kill the Lotus. Quad cannons focusing down the outpost furthest away from them so that all the quads here are going down. This, to me, is looking like it could be come back this side of time, you know. This is really looking like it. Oh my. What are we even seeing? Palace is being fully loaded here. Outpost continue to push. ECMs. Trying to deflect as many missiles as they can. The quads are coming in for the kill. And these outpost army is looking very, very weak now. Everything has been popped open. Need a couple of rebels now, maybe, to clear that up. Clear a couple of tox rebels or a jarman, but he doesn't have a jarman probably unless he queued it up already. Lois there decides not to capture the oil. Instead, she's going to actually just capture the barracks. RPG push here with the terrorist. We'll take out the minigunner. Wolf actually there going down. Barracks is being sold, and Shay has got to be panicking a little bit here. He has to be panicking a little bit. He only needed to win this one game. And now, ha is he going to be able to win the reverse against the Tox? Is he going to be able to do that? What a set. What a set this is turning out to be. Minigun is here. We'll go down. That's a mistake. Shea has been defeated. What are we seeing? What a set indeed. Set, uh, sorry, 6-5 is the score. Absolutely amazing. Okay then, so jumping into the reverse, we've got Vivid down in the south with a Jelly Tox in the green colour. Up in the north, we've got Shea. Just needs one more win to get himself across the line. He's now playing with the infantry in the blue. But yeah, it's an imbalanced matchup. Tox should win, but we've already seen Vivid win here once with the Tox. Sorry, with the uh, infantry, and we've seen Shea win this matchup numerous times already, as I've said. And um, he's gone for a forward supply here. Probably going to be a forward supply into a helix, would imagine. But very, very tense times now. Not many games left. Well, there's going to be a maximum of two games left. And this is one of them. So, yeah, this could be the very last or could continue. We've got a truck rush down this right-hand side. And it is going to avoid the terrorist. The terrorist is actually quite out of position because his barracks has been done pretty far back. This dozer... Sorry, this uh, truck might get the kill here on this worker. But I think Vivid will have seen this build order numerous times before. I think he will anticipate there's a Helix coming. TNT there hits the truck very, very nice indeed. And uh, Shay's going all out with these trucks. He's made three trucks so far. And it's looking like uh, he might actually get into the base here. A few RPGs on this tunnel just need to probably go around the barracks. But those RPGs in the tunnel, you would imagine, are going to take it out. What is Shay doing behind this? He's preparing a Helix. Uh, has he even queued one up? He has now... Is that quite a bit late? I think it is. Vivid has got his two supplies established. At least he's being prepared, but I'm pretty sure that Vivid knows about that because he saw this massive blob of infantry. So it's, you could say it's a pretty all-in here for Shea because he's even sold this supply and made, th made the three trucks off it. So it, it is quite an all-in. Vivid straight away now making the quads. Full helix and Shea is going straight across the map. He's even sending a dozer here uh, to probably try and stop that worker. Is he going to stop it? He is going to stop it. Very, very nice indeed. Going to go straight across the map and straight to the main base. Now, Shea is on top of the two quads. The two quads do pop and that's a bad fight for Vivid. I think based on that alone, it's probably going to be GG. Oh, baby. A helix on top of your arms there. There is not something you want this early in the game in this matchup. And that helix is causing absolute devastation. This is a tech RPG. It might be useful for taking down this helix. He is still technically on two supplies. So he can come back. Probably a stinger needed somewhere. This helix is still flying around. I think he's just going to go straight over to this right hand side. Can clear this, I would imagine, relatively easily. Uh... Like what can Vivid even do? 
Well, these RPGs are chasing down this Helix as, sl as slow as ever. Helix is just killing everything. Kills the supply. The units inside of it are getting vetted. Be useful to kill that worker so it takes longer for him to rebuild it. If it's dropping down two Stinger Sites in his base, this Helix can't push any further. But all the damage has really been done. But don't count Vivid out yet because he's got the fake arms dinner. He's got these two Stingers. Um, both players technically on one supply, but uh, Shay is remaking his second supply over here on this left-hand side. Ooh, needs to be careful with the Helix, but Shay, very, very smart, made a second one, which means you can basically reheal instantly. You can just put him inside of that one and go again. So yeah, that one can now go back over there and repair. Very, very nice indeed. This tunnel here is going to get up, though, and the uh, arms dealer there looks like he's being upgraded to a real one truck there doesn't even get the kill on the worker it is going to go down a mini loss there for Shay. okay vivid pop a few rpgs his rest of his units they're all out of position and this helix here is going to clear this up if it doesn't need to get back on the second supply at asap because now he's uh, 50 percent behind in terms of the economy it's one whole supply missing Elis continues its rampage across the map. It's going to head over here to this bottom right position. Maybe take out this barracks. And Vivid is kind of trapped and in a very bad situation. Yeah, I really thought a Helix would have been too predictable to, to do it. But he seemed to do it. He made three trucks. Kept Vivid busy long enough. Lo uh, long enough. Tech RPG here is on top of the dozer and is on top of the trucks. And he might get a super tech actually. But would it be able to escape though? That is the question because there's a helix on the way. And he does have another helix that has been loaded up. And the two helix is going to move in for the kill. Vivid is trying to cause what damage he can, but uh, everything now that get, gets cleared up and. What can Vivid really do with just this little bit of map control? I don't think there's a lot he can do. I think Shay might have done it. He might have kicked him out here. This dozer is the last one. There is a unit inside of that. Shay's going to drop off a minigunner to go for the oils. There are three quads there. That helix is a bit low now, so you just need to be careful. Pretty sure that one helix would go down if you went in for the fight. But Shay just needs to, what? He can just play a normal game now. Build a war factory, build a barracks. The enemy's only on one supply. You're on two. He's also looking like he wants to go for the oils as well, or at least drop off a minigunner inside of there. Helix is going to make their way over to this right inside where it will find a worker with no defense. That will go down. Take away even more map control. If you just look at Vivid's map control now, you cannot see very much at all. One Helix gets picked off though. That's a very big win indeed. And that was the full HP Helix, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, a bit of a mistake there from uh, Shay. He does have a pretty full outpost here. And he is now getting the oils. If he gets them two oils, that's got to be it. That's got to be it. This is a vet three men again. They're trying to get the capture, but the, the quad is there. It's not going to be allowed, I don't think. It does get stopped. There's a rebel here to clear out this middle building. The ground units are now out for Shea. CC being built for Shea. He's got one oil over here on this right hand side. He's actually very close to level three. So as soon as he takes like one fight, kills one unit, he's pretty much going to be level three. Carpet and artillery. Wipe out that base. Could be the case. Vivid losing a lot of units there that he can't really afford to lose. This bunker has been flushed open and this uh, rebel here is going to get flamed down. Could do a flame wall there, cause a bit of damage. 
Helix is moving again on this right hand side. Well, actually, one Helix, and this tunnel is going to go down again. He's level three now. Carpet and artillery will be on the way. Propaganda center being built. Wolf Hatchery's over here. And this tunnel now going to get closed down as well, and it's looking very, very bad for Vivid. He's had such a good run in this tournament. And very, very impressive games today. But Shay is just looking a little bit too good, I think. Here comes the artillery. And the carpet is on the way as well. And I don't think Vivid's got absolutely anything to deal with it. He's got a worker here and a quad. That's all he's got. Carpet comes in. Artillery is going to hit as well. And is he worker hunted? He's not worker hunted because he's got one here and one here. But they're way out of position. And he hasn't even got enough money at the moment to rebuild a supply. That is it. It's done. Because he has to sell something here to get enough money to build a supply. But even if he did that, Shay's just got way, way too much. Looking way too strong. In one, both times here. Against the Tox. Absolutely stunning. Uh, you have to sell a Stinger. There's no other way. Uh, I don't know why Vivid's delaying. If he's going to stay in the game. Unless he's going to quit. The only other option is to sell a Stinger if he wants to continue. But just look at this from, Vivid, from Shea. It's just looking far, far too strong. Shay's just literally taking everything. There's nothing at all Vivid can do. Vivid's staying. I mean, he's going to make a couple of workers now <laughs> and start collecting. He's not got any chance, though, I'm afraid. And he has been defeated. GG. Well played. Vivid is out and Shay's through to the semifinals where he will face off against Excal. Like I said before, he's had good chances against uh, Excal before. So that will be one to look out for, for sure. If there's a guy to knock out Excal, it could well be Shay. And there was interestingly sexy Mexi actually added a bounty on the Excal's head. I don't know if he dis dislikes him or something, but I'm sure he offered like $50 to any anyone who kicks out Excal. So let's see if Shay will be able to take him down. But this set, take nothing away from it at all. It was an absolutely amazing set. Uh, really, really GG and uh, well played. So yeah, let me know. What you thought of this one in your comments that your favorite set so far i think it's a contender it's definitely top three or top two for me i think so yeah let me know what you thought in the comments drop a like if you enjoyed this one and see you in the next one gg